Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss Casino, starring Robert De Niro, Sharon Stone, Joe Pesci, James Woods, and Don Rickles, directed by Martin Scorsese. Now, I know this movie, but I've never seen it, and I can't believe they moved the Irishman to November, the Bostons! Well, I'll have something to look forward to for the Oscar season. So, let's get into this movie. In 1979, Sam Rothstein, played by Robert De Niro, owns a casino in Las Vegas, along with his assistant Billy Sherbert, played by Don Rickles, and didn't I just see him in a movie recently? Oh, that's right, I did. And I enjoy his presence, and the narration of Sam and his best friend Nicky Santaro played by Joe Pesci, are what makes a Scorsese film a Scorsese film. And this time, De Niro steals the show. And this is the first movie where I don't like Joe Pesci in it, but the worst character has yet to come. But I really like Sam as a character and a casino owner. Ginger McKenna, now this is the worst character I was telling you about, played by Sharon Stone, is the character I just do not like in this movie, because when we first meet her, she comes off like a money-hungry bitch. And she dies like a money-hungry bitch by the end of the movie. Spoiler alert. And her character is a hustler. And Sam ends up marrying her after a month. And what worried me was, the most was whether or not she was going to rob him. And sure enough, by the end of the day, she fucking does rob him by the end of the film. Nikki wants to live in Las Vegas and decides to move there and to get away from his family. And Pesci is playing a typical Joe Pesci, and that sound that soured in my mouth, at to the point that I thought maybe this guy should retire, and he did until he decides to make to be in this movie coming this November. And Nikki being played by Joe Pesci is very one note in my opinion. Sam marries Ginger, and I thought what a big fucking mistake that was. And the movie is well shot and well made, but a couple of the characters, Ginger and Nikki I'm looking at, are very unlikable unlikable characters in my opinion, because they're really stale in one note, and the fact that Sam gives half her all the fancy clothes and the jewels and all of his money, and when I first saw this, I thought, she's going to take it all from him, and again, she makes me sick. She, Sam warns Nikki as he does what he keeps going to not do it or else he's banned from the casinos because he keeps robbing casinos and he does it and he does do it as he's banned from Vegas versus casinos Nikki and Nikki steals money without an alarm triggering and buries his stolen cash in a closet and he owns a casino of his own and the pacing in this movie takes a while to get to the point. And this is a long movie at 2 hours and 58 minutes. And I think they should have cut, been cut... They should have cut, like, at least 30 minutes of the movie out. And again, Scorsese's never brief. Look at how... Look at how long The Irishman is. It's 3 hours and 30 fucking minutes! 3 hours and 30 minutes! Ginger asks Sam for money for... For her ex-boyfriend Lester Diamond, Lester Diamond, excuse me, played by James Woods, and Nikki follows her to a diner, and Sam gets Lester who whacked, and I'm glad he got whacked because he, like Ginger, is a money-hungry motherfucker, and I re did really like that scene, and that's when I know Sam and Nikki are hating on each other at this point. A chairman tells Sam he'll hear him out, and without hearing him out. The chairman sells him out, and Sam is pissed off as he loses his casino and starts his own talk show and sues the commission. And this movie starts to fall apart for me, and it goes downhill of depression, in my opinion, as far as the Scorsese movie goes. Sam is worried about his daughter. What was her name again? Oh, whatever. And Ginger kidnaps her, and she goes to Lester, and he is abusing Ginger and the daughter, and she calls Nikki... And Nikki tells Sam that they want to, they went to Lester's and she stole twenty five thousand dollars, and he takes her back. And I thought he'll regret that. The more he accepts her, the more I feel like he should regret it. 
The actors are doing great with their characters, particularly the ones I do not like, but the performances are pretty damn good. Even for the two I don't like... Well, maybe not Joe Pesci or Stern Stone. Excuse me. Ginger calls someone on the phone like she does throughout the fucking movie, and she wants money from Sam, and she goes to Nikki and tells him she's going to get his money from Sam, and she causes a scene in front of the house, and she takes it all... She takes all of his money, including the safe money. They file for divorce eventually, and I thought the movie gets lower and lower as far as my rating is concerned. Last thing I want to bring up is Sam's survival explosion, as it feels very unrealistic, but he got lucky he survived and lived by the end of this movie. It does, it does feel unrealistic, in my opinion. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 4.9 out of 10. The movie is well made, but it's way too melodramatic. And I did think this movie was well shot, well made, as I said before. And the actors do a good job with the with their performances, unfortunately. I don't like Joe Pesci and Sharon Stone in this movie. Because one is typical and one is a money-hungry bitch. And it's a really long fucking movie. But wait till The Irishman. It's three hours and thirty fucking minutes. But we'll see if it keeps me engaged in November. And I can't believe again they moved it to November. Them bastards. So I will be back in November for The Irishman. And until next time. You talking to me? Eh?